Hey guys, in this episode we are going to build this very beginner friendly counter application. If you are someone that just started with HTML and CSS and maybe want to learn some JavaScript, this is a very nice project to start on. Let's see what you are going to build. As you can see, we have this beautiful UI and this counter card and you can decrease this number. When you decrease this, you can see this text was in red color. When it was zero, it was in black color. And if you increase more than zero, this was in green color. So by building this project, you will be able to learn basic HTML and styling with CSS. Also some JavaScript to write something into DOM and changing colors using JavaScript. So with that being said, let's jump right in and start coding this. In my desktop, I'll create a new folder. Counter. And open that inside VS Code. As you can see, I opened the counter. Let's create the index.html file and styles.css file and our app.js file. So inside the HTML, let me zoom in a little bit. If you press shift one and enter, you can see this will generate the default HTML boilerplate code for you. As you can see on the line one, you can see doc type HTML. This informs the browser that this is an HTML5 document. And as you can see, we have this HTML open and closing tags and head open and closing tag and this body open and closing tag. For the title, let's change this to counter and inside the body, let's create a div with a class name of container. You can create divs using class names by following this short notation. As you can see, if you press dot and type in the class name that you want, this will create a div with a class name of container. And inside this container, we have h1, which says counter. And we have another h1 with the counter value. Like class name, if you enter hash, and type in the ID, it will generate the element with an ID of counter value. For now, let's give it zero. And after this, we have a div with a class name of buttons wrapper. And inside that, we have all our buttons. A button with an ID of decrease. Inside this, we have text decrease. I'll duplicate this two more times. To do that, you can press Alt, Shift and down arrow. As you can see, I simply copied this. This is for reset. And this is for increase. This is also for increase. You can link CSS file inside head tag. If you type in link and press enter, this will give this tag right here. Link rel is style sheet and href. We have to give the path name for our CSS. Styles.css. And before closing body tag, let's link the app.js file. You can see script inside src. This will be app.js. Now let's open with live server. Right click. And you can see open with live server. If you can't find this option right here, open this extensions tab and search for live server. As you can see, simply install this. After installing it, you can see open with live server. As you can see, our counter, the value and these buttons right here. Now let's style this. Open this CSS file. For, as you can see, Every HTML element has a default margin and paddings. I want to remove that. You can remove that using global selector, which is hash tricks. For this margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing, border box. And for the body, make background color to something like this. And for the container, I'll make max width 400 pixel and margin 
top 60 pixel and look on left and right auto so this will align the box inside center as you can see this was in center let's change this color to something like this you can select any color like this is my personal preference you can use anything that you want for the container add background color as white as you can see now let's add some padding 20 pixel and border radius 10 pixel and display as flex and flex direction column and align items center so as you can see display flex let me comment this out and I'll show you as you can see display flex will align the items in your row and if you made flex direction as column you can see this was in aligned as column one after another so if you made align item center to that those will be aligned in the center and let me give you a gap when you apply display as flex you can use this property called gap when you apply gap I'll give it 20 pixel as you can see I had 20 pixel of space between each of the elements if you don't have this display flex property these align items and gap won't work as you can see these are not working this gap and align items will work only if you have display as flex for the counter value if you remember we have an id for this counter value so to style an id using css you have to give hash the id name counter value for this font size 60 pixel as you can see we have this bigger font size and for this container which is this container let's add some box shadow 2 pixel 2 pixel 5 pixel black and let's change this opacity to something like this you can change opacity by clicking right here this bar right here is for opacity you can hover over on any color and you can change the colors I hover over here and I will change the opacity to like this you can see we have this box shadow I'll make this as 10 pixel and this to 1 a yeah. for buttons wrapper add margin top 20 pixel and for all our buttons you can select you can style elements using class name or id or directly element as you can see here we are styling using class name with dot if you want to style any element using an id you have to use hash and if you want to style elements directly you can use the tag name here as you can see here we are styling button so for this I will add a padding of a 8 pixel top and bottom and 16 pixel left and right top and bottom is 8 pixel and left and right 16 pixel background transparent and border radius 5 pixel and margin top and bottom 0 and left and right 10 pixel and border 1 pixel solid of black and cursor should be pointer and outline none let's change this font size to 80 pixel and this to 10 pixel okay you can have some bigger font size so now let's write our javascript code open the js file right here let's get all the buttons that we have const buttons equal to const is the keyword that we use to define variables document dot we can use query selector all to select all elements 
width which are button and let's get the counter value counter value equal to document dot get element by id this should be counter value so as you can see inside this buttons variable it will store all elements query selector all which which will select all the elements that are buttons so inside uh, this document will look for all the buttons that we have inside this document and store that inside this buttons variable and this get element by id will look for the counter value id inside our html file so it will store this element inside this counter value variable so for for all our buttons button start for each this will take a function this will take button so for each button we'll add an event listener which is click on click we will run a function that will take the event this event will give us the id const id equal to e dot target dot id this event is the item that we click on when we click on this button this event will give us the the click event with this button so e dot target will be this button dot id will be this id is right here understood right so we getting all the buttons from our document and for each button using this for each function for each button we are adding an event listener which is click whenever we click on any button this will run this function right here this function will get the id of that element that we clicked on and based on that id if id equal to decrease We have to define our counter value here let count equal to 0 so our count starts from 0 if id equal to decrease that means when we click on that decrease button count dot count minus minus else if id equal to increase then count plus plus else count equal to zero understood right whenever we click on this button whenever we click on this button this will run this function this function will get the id and if that id is decrease counter will be minus and if that id is increase counter will be plus else it will set to zero which means when we click on this reset it will be zero so after increasing or decreasing the counter value we have to update this count value inside this counter value so counter value which is this h1 right here inside that h1 dot in a in a text equal to count so this will update the inner text of this h1 to the count value as you can see if I decrease you can see minus 1 reset will be 0 increase 1 whenever the count value is less than 0 we want that to be in red color so to do that at here if count is less than 0 then for the counter value dot style dot color this should be in red else if count is greater than 0 then counter value dot style dot color equal to green else when it is 0 
counter value dot style dot color equal to black now as you can see if i decrease this was in red color and when i reset this will be zero when i increase this will be in green cool right now feel free to add some extra functionality to this like incrementing by x number like whatever it may be and resetting something like that that's all for this video i see you guys in the next episode with an another beginner friendly javascript project